The one thing Sosono no Freerun really wants you to know is that the elf protagonist Freerun perceives time differently from humans. It's in the synopsis. Every analysis video I ever try to watch on this thing mentions it, and the actual show constantly shoves it in your face. But that observation alone, although a concept worth diving into, does not make a good story. And the first episodes got me worried for a second. Yes, the scene where Freerun cries at Himmel's funeral is quite good and sad, and sets up Violet, I mean Freerun's goal, of understanding the people around her quite well. But she still spends a lot of the show from this point forward disconnected from the human perception of time, much to Fern and other characters' concern. From a story perspective, I get it. She is an elf, and her perception of time will not change the moment Himmel dies. It's more realistic to have her constantly remind the audience of that. But from a storytelling perspective, it's weird how this plot point is repeated to us in pretty much the same way every time, with the same observations. She spends months in this one place looking for flowers, because she doesn't understand time the same way. She spends months fixing the beach, because she doesn't understand time the same way. She spends months looking for a tree, because she doesn't understand that. And I swear, every fucking episode so far has had a time lapse, because, uh, time. So t time passes very fast for uh, time get it get it get it this is probably an innocuous point all things considered because obviously what the show wants to focus on are the memories of the hero's party free room wants to relive in order to understand them and honor them before time forgets about them hell the prologue ends with her literally retreading the same path the party took in order to talk to him again which free room doesn't even want that much it's just because of the funny dwarf guy but it still bothered me a bit how much the passage of time was brought up but nothing was done with it until the second half of episode 3 forced me to shamelessly take those words back but before that a bit of context after the waterworks were dropped by the end of episode 1, Freerun has shown steady development in actually trying to form meaningful connections with people. She found someone to connect to in Fern, despite Fern never really understanding why, she was able to see through Hyther's tough front he puts on in his last moments due to coming to intimately know him in the course of... I forgot how many years. After the two set out for travel, Freerun cares for Fern and feels guilty when she realized she didn't know enough about her, so on and so forth. By the way, we'll probably learn more about her past later on, but I do like that she mentions in passing that she used to be a lot more apathetic, really puts you into perspective how significant the growth is for her. Freerun's continued attempt to empathize and understand the human experience is then brilliantly built up as a climax of sorts in a fight against Qual with the Demon King's Mage. It was jarring to see a supposedly incredibly powerful character introduced about halfway into the episode. Freerun tells the story of how Qual, the developer of the first piercing spell, was so powerful she couldn't directly beat him and had to resort to sealing him, which just raises the question of how exactly they're gonna beat him this time. The show does a good job of keeping us on our toes and only hints at the answer by making Freerun say, you really haven't read through the history books, huh? A couple of times. All of this contributed to when I finally saw the answer to this puzzle and everything, not only this fight just kind of clicked. Qual fires his signature spell. Really good looking fight by the way, look at those colors! Woo! And Fern blocks it with ease, which surprises even her, as it's just a basic defensive spell she's learned since childhood. Freeman then reveals that in the 80 years Qual's been sealed away, humans have realized the threat of a spell, analyzed it, and developed their magic to the point that his piercing spell has become obsolete. Finally, she finishes the monster off with his own spell. <laughs> It might just sound like a cool action scene on the surface, but what this moment meant is vitally important and made me finally fully invested in the point of Freerun. Souls of Freerun is a story about the human experience contrasted with the vastness of time. The theme of Freerun's extrapolated timeline is reinforced constantly to not only show the protagonist's unique perspective, but also to juxtapose with the human lives other characters live out, which to Freerun, aka the audience's perspective most of the time, seems so weak and insignificant. Yet the beautiful irony in it all is, humans, due to their short lives, are able to imbue so much meaning into it, make so many connections with others. So much of the show is just about how Himmel was loved by everybody even after his death that the likes of Freerun will never truly understand. As Freerun always insists when the party brought up how much they value their time together, it's merely 10 years. But through the death of Himmel and Heiter, Freerun, as discussed earlier, starts to appreciate the meaning in such brevity and actively seeks to preserve it in her memory. That's why this encounter with Qual, another being who, for the first time in the series, shares the same perspective on time as her, is so important. It shows how far she's come, as Freeman uses the knowledge of the weak, yet persistent humans to defeat him. Through perhaps the most direct example, that being technological advancement, Freeman, for the first time in the series, shows her understanding of human time and what they can do in spite of a limited lifespan. I'm sure this theme will continue to develop, as Freerun keeps developing as a person, but this, not even really a fight, was the moment in the show for me that truly put all of what I just said into perspective and made me realize the reason why the passage of time remains important in a story about self-discovery and a lot of other things. Good story. It's the moment that sold me on Freerun. Is this kind of like humanity jacking themselves off and saying, Oh, we die, but it's cool because these are the... <laughs> kinda? But this show is not that cynical, so I'm not gonna go there. 